In this video, I will show you how to track HubSpot forms with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. Some things have changed since the last time I covered this topic, so make sure to watch the entire video. Here I have a demo page with the HubSpot form embedded. On this page, I have installed a Google Tag Manager container, and inside that container, there is a Google Analytics 4 tag. This is needed for the installation of GE4. If you have no idea how to install Google Analytics with Google Tag Manager, then I will post a link to a tutorial below this video. So to track the form submissions of HubSpot forms, we have to add a custom event listener to our Google Tag Manager container. Below this video, you will find a link to a page where you can copy the listener. Once you do that, then go to Google Tag Manager, Tags, New, Tag Configuration, then custom HTML and paste that entire code together with the script tag at the beginning and at the end. This listener is updated compared to my older video about HubSpot tracking, because since then, HubSpot introduced a new version of forms. So this listener will support the version 3 and also version 4 forms. Now let's fire this listener on all pages. Ideally, if you care about your page performance, it would be better to fire this tag only on those pages where HubSpot form is actually embedded, for example, on your contact page. But for sake of simplicity, I will fire this on all pages. Then let's name this tag. CHTML stands for custom HTML. And then hit save. Now let's test if this listener is working. Click preview. In a new window, you will need to enter the URL of the page where you have a HubSpot form embedded. So paste that URL here and click Connect. Once the preview mode has connected, you can submit the form. Click Submit. And once the form is submitted, go to the preview mode. And here you should see the form submission event. You can expand the data layer push and you will see what was submitted. We have the ID of the form, we have the conversion ID, so these two fields are dispatched by the HubSpot form, and we also have form data. For each field, you will have a separate value right here, and if your form, let's say, has five fields, then all those five fields will be included right here. If you're working with the older version of HubSpot form, which is version 3, then you might have even more parameters available in the form data. Let's say that in this case, we want to send a form submission event to Google Analytics 4. And together with that event, we will send the ID of the form and then also the email. Because let's say that we will be using these events for enhanced conversions inside Google Analytics. So we will be sending user email as user provided data. To use this kind of information, we need to create data layer variables for each parameter. So one for form ID and one for email. Let's start with form ID. I will go to Google Tag Manager, Variables, then scroll down, click New in the User Defined Variables, Variable Configuration, and Data Layer Variable. Here we have to enter the exact name of the parameter that we have in the data layer, and we will use form ID. Then let's name this variable and click Save. Then we can access the email, but email is inside the form data. That's why it will not be enough to enter just email in the data layer variable. We will have to enter form data dot email. Let's go to Google Tag Manager, create another variable, which is data layer variable, and then enter form data dot email. Let's double check that. So form data dot email. If you want to access first name as well, then it would be form data dot first name. Now let's name this variable and click Save. Then we will want to fire a Google Analytics tag when the form submission event happens in the data layer. So for that, we will need to create a trigger, which will be looking for form submission events. So first, I will copy the name of the event, then go to Google Tag Manager, Triggers, then New, Trigger Configuration, custom event, and then paste that event name like this, and hit save. Finally, we will need to create a Google Analytics 4 event tag, which will send this information. That's why we should go to tags, then first go to GA4 config tag to copy the tag ID, 
And then let's create a new event tag. So Google Analytics for event, and then paste that measurement ID here. Ideally, to make this a bit more easier to maintain, you could create a variable that contains this measurement ID, and then reuse that constant variable in all your GA4 tags. But to keep this video a bit shorter, I will be adding the measurement ID like this. Then here we have the event name. Google recommends using generate lead event, so you can use that name, but you can also use, let's say, form submission. Then in the event parameters, we will add a parameter, which is called, let's say, form ID, and its value will be the variable that fetches this. So we can just click this button and we will insert the form ID variable. We also plan to send the user email as the user provided data. To do that, we first have to create a user provided data variable. So for now, let's just save this tag. Later, we will come back to edit it. But now let's go to variables. Then click new in the user defined variables, variable configuration, and then keep looking for the user provided data. Here we will use manual configuration. And then inside the email, we will insert the variable that contains the email address. Then let's name this variable and hit save. Now let's go back to tags, find our event tag. And then if you want to include the user provided data, you have to add a parameter called user underscore data. And then here we will insert that user provided data variable. Google keeps changing the process of how you send the user provided data. So there's a chance that in the future, this part will change. So you might need to refer to the documentation or some other tutorial. But right now, this is the process that we have to follow. Then in the triggering, click anywhere and select the custom event trigger. Finally, let's rename this tag and click save. Let's test if this is working. So click preview to refresh the preview mode. Then submit the form. And here, once we get the form submission, we will see that the tag has fired. Right now, when I'm recording this video, there is a bug in the preview mode. It sometimes shows the unknown tag type, but this is not affecting how your tags are working. They should work fine but this is just something for you to keep in mind. After a while, this warning right here will go away. So now let's test if this event was received by Google Analytics. Let's go to GA4, then admin, then debug view. And then here we will see the form submission. Click here and you should see the form ID. You will not see the user provided data because debug view does not display that, but you can still check if the data was sent to Google. You can do that by going back to the preview mode, then switch here to your Google Analytics for measurement ID, and then click on the form submission hit. Here, you should be looking for some parameter related to EM. If you don't see it, it means that first you need to enable user provided data capabilities in Google Analytics for property. To do that, go to Google Analytics, then admin, data collection, and then turn on user provided data collection. Click turn on, do not enable this and click turn on. Then just to make sure you can also go to data streams, click website data stream, then configure tax settings then scroll down and allow user provided data capabilities. So click here and make sure that this is enabled, but do not enable this because it can cause some problems and false positives. So if you have automatic user provided data collection, disable it because right now with this setup that I showed you, you're already sending a more accurate user provided data. So click save. Now let's go to the website, refresh it, and submit the form again, because we want to verify that user provided data is sent. So here, I will submit the form again. And then once that is done, then go to tag assistant and click the latest form submission event. And now you should see the EM parameter and EM right here stands for email. 
And this is a hashed value of the email that you sent. It is not readable, but that's the way how it works. What's important is that you have this parameter. So once you make sure that this is working, your next step and the final step would be to publish these changes. So click submit and then publish. After this moment, your changes will go live to your website visitors and you will start collecting data in your Google Analytics 4 property. Oh, and one more thing that I forgot to mention is that you still might need to create a custom dimension for the form ID. Maybe in the future, Google Analytics will introduce it as a built-in dimension, but right now, as far as I remember, there is no such dimension. You can always check this. So you can go to explore, then click blank, then click plus in dimensions and enter form ID. If you don't see it, I have it right here because it's in a custom. I have already created that dimension, but if you don't see it, it means that you will need to register that dimension. To register it, you will need to go to admin, then scroll down to custom definitions. In custom dimensions, click create custom dimension and then enter form ID. Scope should be event. And then here you should enter form underscore ID, exactly the same name as it is in your Google tag. I mean the event tag. If you have some other name, then that other name must be inserted right here. I cannot save this dimension because I already have registered this custom dimension. And this step should be done almost immediately after you publish your changes. Once this is done, you should wait for 24, maybe 48 hours, and then your form ID information together with form submission events should become available and visible in your Google Analytics property. And that's how you can track HubSpot forms with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. If you found this video useful, hit the like button. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.